Hey everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We are going to take a high flying view of stable coins. Why? Because there is an explosion of stable coin projects. Some 60 plus projects are out there in development. And the biggest difference when we compare those to virtual currencies or digital assets is that they are much more of a fixed price. So when we have a the digital assets and virtual currencies, the market is making the price. That is organically driven by supply and demand. But stable coins are a little different. And in this video, I also want to look at, in a very fun way, what if Ripple were to launch a stable coin associated with XRP? And you think, Wow, that's crazy. That's that's ridiculous. We don't need that. We have XRP. It transacts so well, so fast and so cheap. But when you look at the attraction by not only users and merchants and businesses, it, one of the attractions is that lack of volatility, the fixed pricing. So we're just for fun going to look at what that possibly could look like. Okay, so in the beginning though, I wanna just mention some of the projects that have been recently launched. As we know, IBM said that it's gonna have an FDIC uh, uh, stablecoin built on Stellar, and it's gonna have a focus of matching suppliers and merchants. And then we have Australia. They just announced that they are going to have their first stablecoin. It'll be ready in 2019. Its focus is going to be to pay employees. PwC, PricewaterhouseCooper, their stablecoin, which was announced just a few days ago, is going to challenge Tether. GMO Internet, it's a uh, internet company here in Japan. They are going to launch a coin to be used in cross-border remittances. And SBI Holdings, of course, their stable coin is going to be more for domestic use. Now, the Japanese government announced that they have new goals and targets set for a, a more cashless society. So SBI is going to participate in helping meet that target goal. Uh, OKCoin okay USA, very interesting. They are going to launch a fully compliant yuan-backed stablecoin. It is uh, for the purpose to improve the internationalization of the renminbi. That is the internal currency in China. And then the UK announced that it's going to have the world's first pound sterling back LBG peg coin. It, it will be for the OTC uh, trades on the London market. So all of these coins are electronic. They're censorship resistant. They create value. They move money all in this digital world. So it is kind of exciting. Um, many of them are going to fail, as we saw with the ICOs. Uh, the ones that work as a liquidity tool on the exchanges are probably going to keep on increasing, but it's just going beyond those liquidity tool business models. And as you'll see, the um, projects that are out there are getting more and more creative. Here is one that was announced on the 8th of October. Uh, it's coming out of Singapore. It's the first gold-backed stablecoin based commercial model and it's going to launch launch in Asia. So here's the group of the people behind the GGC or Global Gold Cash. It's the first ever gold backed digital currency based business model. So basically what they've done is they have tokenized gold. And then there is Terra. Terra is an ambitious crypto project. It's going to build a stable coin through e-commerce. Now this business model really makes sense to me. In addition to the business model, what's interesting is the early backers include four of the world's largest crypto exchanges. So Binance, OKX, Hyobi Capital, and Dunamu, which is the firm behind Korea's Upbit, have all poured capital into this Terra project. And it is being headed by a young man by the name of 
Daniel Shin. He was educated in the United States, but has since moved back to Korea. And it is the first time the global exchanges have come together on a deal. The stellar lineup of investors, there's 20 total, but they also include names like Polychain Capital, China's FBG Capital, Hashed, 1KX, Kinetic Capital, and Arrington XRP, the crypto fund from TechCrunch founder, Michael Arrington. So let's see the face behind this project. This is Daniel. He's going to have $32 million to get this project off the ground. And basically the e-commerce strategy, e strategy that he's going to use will involve providing discounts and rewards for consumers who use Terra. The merchants, meanwhile, have also an incentive to use Terra to succeed since it would let them pay only a fraction of the transaction fees that currently fork out to Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and those other payment providers. Imagine, as Daniel say, says, going to Amazon and clicking TerraPay at the checkout. You don't need a wallet and so on. All you need to know is that it's a better deal, said Shin, adding that Asia provides the most favorable regulatory and cultural environment to launch this project. So I do believe that it's going to launch first in Korea and then roll out into Asia. So keeping in mind this model, this model works. Uh, it's, it's been proven outside of the crypto space. And the thing that I think Daniel's missing, I mean, I think he's got a, a great shot and he's got a lot of capital to make it work, but he needs a community. So just because you have a use case doesn't mean it's going to be used, right? So if he were to concentrate also on a an existing community, I think that this kind of stablecoin project would have a good chance. So I wanted to take a look at the 13 most engaging communities in cryptocurrency uh, ecosphere. This article is all about who is active and who is supporting in terms of the communities if you are to get involved. And I'm, I'm just gonna quickly look at the criteria so first, we want to know, is that community engaging? And are they sincere? Meaning, do they care about the values of the project? And how about the presence? Are, are they in chat rooms chatting and discussion, discussing the project on forums? How about the motivation? Uh, the means of this project, is it committed to realizing its values or are people in it just for the money? And relevance. So, you know, when you have a discussion about real responsibilities of the project. I think this is good criteria. I'm very familiar with the XRP community. I think they would score very high in all of these points. But for this article, and in not in any order, here are the 13 communities that they highlight. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Monero, Sub stratum or substratum however you want to say it tomato tomato bitcoin waves lisk nano eos tron bch and xrp so knowing that the community of xrp is really strong what happens if we were to bring a stable coin to that community what would that look like it might look something like this. So you have the XRP community. Right now, you have some options to actually lock up your coins on a wallet or on an exchange. And in return, they will give you a percentage back over a period of time. So that percent um, might be 2%, 3%, or up to 5%, depending on the time. But what happens if you were able to use a community wallet didn't have to lock up your coin. You could actually 
use that coin or sell that coin at any time you wanted to based on whatever uh, price action was occurring on the live market. Uh, and then if you did use the community wallet, you in turn were given a stable coin. Now this is just what if, this is just creative thinking. This is just, let's see what something could look like. There is no stable coin out there called Zerk Pearl. This is just for some creative thinking. So if the XRP community used these wallets and in return you got a Zerk Pearl, you then could take that Zerk Pearl, which is like a royalty or a point, and you could then uh, use it within the membership of partners that have been created or accumulated or um, developed by the platform that issued the stable coin. And as the price of your digital asset XRP increased, so would the spending power of that stable coin. Interesting, huh? And then you could spend the stable coin on things like, I don't know, education for colleges or universities or different airlines, maybe Amazon, uh, maybe hotels that are currently operating global chains. Maybe it's Apple. This list here could be endless. It could be huge. I don't think this is the difficulty in putting together the list because if you can guarantee those merchants a stable price and a cheaper means to transact, that will get their attention. And if you can then bring the community a stable coin that is accepted by this very large list of companies, that should be very, very interesting. So let's look at a royalty point system in Japan that is very successful, very much like TerraCoin, except they just use a point card. This is called the T card in Japan. And it is by a company called Sutaya. Sutaya used to be a brick and mortar business that you walked into, you paid your rental fee for a DVD, you walked out, had it for three days, and then you had to walk back the DVD to the store and return it. Everybody knows that business model is dead. So they have reinvented themselves. And in this reinvention, they came up with a points card it has 67 million members and a network of 941,000 stores. So we know that this kind of model works, which is why I think TerraCoin makes sense to me. It's just that they are missing the community component. So I'm just thinking, wow, it makes sense that if we were to have a stable coin and bring the stable coin to that community, that should be very, very interesting. In the reinvention of Sutaya, they recently partnered with Starbucks. So many of the Sutaya locations now have become bookstores, very much like the Barnes and Noble used to be in the United States. So you, you can walk in, you can browse the books, you can sit down, you can read the books, they have a great magazine section, and then if you go deep into the store, you can find the Starbucks. This is uh, an, an example of an interior shot in Tokyo of the Roppongi location, very beautiful, very inviting. Here is the outside view looking in, very modern, has a great outdoor seating area to watch the world go by, but it's very um, attractive and the atmosphere is really fantastic. So this is a place that your tea card can accumulate points and then you can in turn use it at any of the 900 and some thousand member locations. So, okay. I now want to move to a, just a fluff story. And if you're new to this channel, at the end of the videos, I talk about something from Japan. So kind of staying with Starbucks, 
this is a very special Starbucks in Japan. It's located in Kyoto. And it is a house that is over a hundred years old. And you can see the actual Starbucks logo on the fabric Norden. Norden is a piece of fabric that is hung when the place of business is open. And if the Norden is gone, then you know the place of business is closed. It's very simple. It's kind of like an open closed sign, except it's done with a hanging banner. So inside there are different rooms and it's very special. So here is an example of the interior and you sit on tatami. Tatami is the rice, uh, it's actually uh, rush woven flooring and it's connected with a fabric edge. Very cozy, smells great when it's new. And these are zabutan, which is an oversized cushion. And it's what a great way, what a great environment to enjoy your coffee. Here's another room. You can see that it's a little bit elevated. So nice, so nice. If the sitting on the floor isn't for you, they do have some sofas and they also have traditional bench style seating. And then this kind of seating is very common in Japan. You sit on the floor, but there's an open area that you can actually dangle your legs in this open space below. And then you have a window seating, which I'm sure if you're in Kyoto, you probably have a view of a really nice garden. All right, so there you have it, a very unique Starbucks in Japan. All right, everybody, take care and uh, see you soon. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.